Hello, everyone, and welcome to ESSEN Online 2021 speakers, speaker series. My name is Elisa Arsaru. I am a professor of practice at the Institute for the Study of International Development at McGill University. I'm a former United Nations diplomat and had the privilege to represent the UN, UNDP, and UN Women in three different regions and several countries as United Nations resident coordinator, as UNDP resident representative, and UN uh, Women uh, Director, among other senior leadership roles. In our interview today, we will focus on the role of business in development. More precisely, we will tackle the question, can corporate governance deliver the 17 sustainable development goals in post-COVID era? In light of a consensus by world leaders that Agenda 2030 can only be achieved with businesses and private sector engagement. I am pleased to welcome Halle Bank Jorgensen, our distinguished speaker for today, to share with us her insights, drawing on her expertise, a wealth of knowledge, and in her role as the CEO of Competent Boards. Halle is the CEO of Competent Boards, which offers the global online ESG Competent Board Certificate Program with a faculty of over 100 renowned international board members, executives, and experts. And I'm very happy to say that I am one of the alumni and this program has made such a, a, a switch and shift and uh, a change in my uh, career. Uh, she has uh, a 30 year track record in turning environment, social governance, climate and sustainability risks into innovative and profitable business opportunities and has worked with many global fortune 500 board members and executives. She serves on His Royal Highness Prince of Wales Accountability for Sustainable Sustainability Global Expert Panel, among other boards. Ali is a business lawyer. She is a former PwC audit and advisory partner in Denmark and the US. And in 2020, she was awarded the Global Impact Award and named one of five people in ESG to look out for. Ali, we're very pleased and privileged to have you with us this morning. I know how busy you are, so let's get uh, rolling. Uh, let's start with the basics, Holly. Do you think corporate governance can deliver the 17 SDGs in post-COVID recovery period? Well, first of all, thank you very much, Elisa, for, for inviting me to this. And I'm glad that you're putting your ESG Competent Board Certificate and designation to good use. Um, so to your question, well, I think that it will take all of us to deliver on the 17 SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And unfortunately, we have, I guess, witnessed a setback on many of the SDGs due to the pandemic that we are still living in at this moment. And I think that's a setback that is making it perhaps even, even more challenging to achieve the goals by, by 2030. But on the other hand, the pandemic seems to have been shining this light on so many of the underlining factors that are contributing to, I guess, the world's most significant problems. But so much that many of the global companies now see achieving the sustainable development goals as the world's most important opportunity. And I think that's important that we moving kind of like is this problems, problems, problems to seeing that this is opportunities. And this is also where you ask me in terms of, of corporate governance. I think this is where it plays a significant role. Governance moves a social or environmental project from being a project to being a integrated short and long-term value creating process uh, and i guess um, perhaps i should i should explain what i mean with that 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 most companies have projects that address one or more of the sdgs many of these companies have had these projects way before 2015 where you know, the, the goals were agreed to by all of the 193 member states of the un but it seems to have been this project versus a process. Let's take gender ecology as an example. Many companies have had gender ecology projects, as I said, before, you know, before we had the goals. Suddenly we got the goals and we were like, oh, we also have SDG number five. However, if it's if it's a project, it often doesn't get the right attention of the board of directors. 
and the project uh, get perhaps less or more attention depending on the C-suite's interest in that subject and the media's interest itself. If we, if we introduce governance procedures, we make it more to this, as I said before, kind of like an, an integrated short and long-term value creating process that the board oversee. So in, in my mind, we need to have boards, board of directors all over the world become ESG and SDG competent. More and more inv investors are, are asking for it. So there are so many opportunities that's waiting for the companies that understand how to integrate ESG and SDG into everything they do from being attractive to talent, having more engaged employees, to being part of basically the future business landscape. And, and personally, and, and so you know that, I, I, I would hate to see those that don't understand the significant value of ESG and the SDGs uh, to experience this famous Kodak moment. All the opportunities are right in front of us. And now is the time to transform your business, you know, all the businesses, embed the SDGs, the ESG, environment, social governance, I should say, into the, the, the business processes and, and the governance structure. And as we all, I guess, do our bit and are thoughtful, I believe that we will be able to make positive impact on the 17 global, global goals. Um, and perhaps even more critical, create a different narrative and a global mindset for, for the world we want to live in. Um, and that again, I guess, will, will impact our, our global governance as, as, as you, uh, you were talking about as well. Yes. I, you are absolutely right on the ESG. I think the importance of the uh, program that I, I know with you and what you do in that program is really uh, uh, the portfolio or the profiles of the people involved, involved. They are, you know, senior leaders, business leaders, and also there are managers with different portfolios who are there that can make an impact in their own organization. So I think the more people are more, uh, you know, have the knowledge and the skills and the competencies in really the ESG assessments frameworks and how to look at and, you know, to really make sure this is, this is something that not just we do it as we go, but it's something that must be done. And there's a know-how how to do it. That's, I think, the important of what you're doing, Holly. And I do believe that there is a lot of opportunities there. There's tremendous, uh, tremendous challenges, absolutely. Um, but yes, there are opportunities. So if we, I was, in, you know, reading your report on uh, future board competencies 2020, and it was really interesting to see, you know, how you frame it and how you really uh, assess the challenges that we are facing. And, but also you put it in a, in a, a, you know, a mindset that there are opportunities and there's some kind of, you know, the engagement of companies with the supply chain, with, you know, the shareholders and stakeholders. There's no divide, like it's coming together as, you know, we're all in this together. So I noted in your report, a sense of urgency surrounding environmental, social and humanitarian problems and an elevated sense of societal pressure on leading, or leading organizations and their board of directors to take action. You see this as uh, the pressure coming, coming from bottom up and the response from you know, uh, top to bottom, something like uh, we are witnessing an impact of democratic governance principles and values on corporate governance and board competencies. I see this is very promising. What do you say? Um, First of all, thank you very much. Um, yes, I, I, I think, as, as you were saying, in terms of the ESG Competent Board Certificate Program, uh, because we go through these different strategic topics and look at things from different angles, you get this mindset where you not only have the insight to understand the, the ESG and the sustainable development goals, the climate, etc., but you probably also, I hope, get the foresight to see what is it we need to do in order to achieve you know what we are looking for 
ability to look at the purpose of of the company etc and and so to to your question in terms of of this um i think you said democratic governance principles and uh, i i i think we are witnessing a global um awakening i i i think we have all seen the the blue skies at the start of the pandemic where we all stopped uh, you know driving etc I think we all saw the the animals that came out on on the streets. Uh, I think we all suffered pain by both losing our freedom, some lost loved ones. uh, And I think all of that have made an impact on us all. Add to that the the many uh, climate related catastrophes that we are seeing from flooding, ice storms, hurricanes, and and the slower but perhaps more more impactful issues that climate change will have on our, our lives and, and and business. So most businesses today need to think about how climate change will impact their supply, being that directly because of, for example, a failed harvest. Uh, or indirectly because suppliers are experiencing extreme weather events or that the transportation of the goods is delayed due to extreme weather events. And I think if, if we add to that a sort of the, the biodiversity crisis that, that we also are facing, um, then, then that is only the environmental front or, or, or topics. And I could also make you a long list of, of the social issues that, that's impacting business ability to to do business and be an employer of choice. And I think that's where, you know, you say the democratic, I mean, if you look at the giant asset managers, like, you know, the Black Rocks of the world, we've seen how these major environmental and social topics um, impact how they look at the future financial return, and that they have started to demand that business leaders board members, board of directors have the insight and, and this foresight that I'm talking about to make informed decisions on ESG matters. Otherwise, they say they might don't, not want to vote for those board of directors. Absolutely, yeah. But the problem is that, that there are very few executives and, and board members that have these ESG or SDG competences or climate competences. And, and this is why, as you know, we are educating executives and board members via the, the ESG Competent Boards uh, Certificate and, and Designation Program. But I think, and this goes back to where you asked me in terms of the report, I don't think that this is only about the competences. It's also about these personal traits that leaders of the 21st century must have to be efficient. Um, I, I, in this survey report, we, we talk about the stewardship in the 21st century, and we illustrate that with a person with a brain, a heart, and a hand for the competences, but living in this global world. So when you ask if we are witnessing an impact of democratic, the, 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 you know, Governance principles. Yeah. Mean, um, you know, inclusiveness, diversity, and accountability. And we've seen that all as part of what, you know, are demanded from the boards to lead on these issues and make sure quality, you know, along, you know, the chain top down, bottom up. So we're seeing these changes and those are principles that democratic governance, you know, guidelines when, you know, trying to uh, you know, work with governments to make sure quality, we, you know, is, uh, you know, addressed, uh, poverty is eliminated, and all the injustices are, are you know, are being, uh, you know, uh, tackled and uh, addressed. Yes. yes. So, so yes. So yes, we, we see that investors are voting with their money. Uh, I think we can see that employees and talent are voting on who they want to give their energy. I think we are seeing more and more customers voting with their purse on who they want to buy from. And I, think that we even have started to see and perhaps we'll see more suppliers that are starting to choose who do they want to supply to and um, so i guess it, it all comes back to yes. this and customers who want to you know what companies they want to 
uh, buy from based on their sustainability agenda and you know the ESG framework and the results that they come up with. This is fascinating discussion, Ali. I really thank you very much for your time this morning. I know you're busy and you have to run, but this is just the beginning of this of this dialogue on this topic, as important as it is, especially now. You know we're trying to uh, move beyond COVID pandemic and putting all these plans in place for recovery and resilience. And I just want to say that you hit it on the nail. It's the traits of the leadership because you can have all the strategies and all the policies in the world in place, but then the impact, if you don't have the leader there that does not have the vision and the really the traits to make it really uh, happen. And we've seen report that, you know, that says exactly that. They have, they have the strategies, but the progress is not as, as expected. So hopefully what we have witnessed in pandemic and with the work that you do and, and others will be able to see more and more, you know, equity and you know addressing human, uh, poverty and also post covid you know the injustice and people poverty are uplifted uh, through all the work together corporations businesses and governments and multilaterals all of us in this together thank you again and we look forward to having you again in the series and beyond and uh, have a good day and thank you for being with us thank you very much